How are we doing, friends? And welcome back to Continues to Tick. As you saw by the title of the video, we've reached yet again another milestone, this time with the $90,000 mark. And if you've been here for the journey, you know we've started from the very beginning. So it's been a long time coming. It's been about four years, literally today is July 20th, four years of being a dividend investor, and here we are, zero to $90,000. And sure, for some, you could say that was a slow journey. For me, it felt just right. This is what I had imagined when I had started this dividend portfolio. It was just a slow, consistent growth. And for me, I'll show you the stats. It actually is not that slow. It feels just right for me. But in addition to this, I also reached another milestone. So we got the four year dividend portfolio mark. We got $90,000 of dividend portfolio size and we've reached $2,500 of dividend payouts, which I'll show you. So yes, you did get that up front. Now you know how much my portfolio pays me, but you don't know the exact amount. And I'm gonna show you on M1's new calculator. So shout out to the subscriber that pointed that out. I had heard about it, had gotten an email about it. I'm probably no longer gonna use my tracking app. I'm just gonna go with the M1's dividend calculator. It's really neat. So we'll walk through it here together. But friends, if this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here on some of these milestone videos before, I just want you to know we go pretty in depth here. It's gonna be all statistics, all data of the portfolio and telling you a little bit about the story, about my journey as well. But some things we'll cover is how much I fund my portfolio and how often, my current sector allocations and percentages, the number of current holdings in my dividend portfolio, my current dividend portfolio's yield, my expense ratio, and of course, exactly how much my dividend portfolio currently pays me in dividends. And I'm just happy <laughs> that the audio for this video is gonna sound a lot better than my last one. And my last video tended to do pretty well, so I'm surprised. That's just how it goes sometimes. But I promise the audio in this video will be better. You would imagine after numerous, numerous videos, I would know how to hold this mic. But just before we begin, friends, I want to give you guys some quick thoughts. So a little bit about me, right? If you guys have been here for the journey, I just want to let you guys know who I am. So I'm Jesse, right? I'm the creator of Continues to Tick. I started this portfolio in the very beginning of the 2020 like upswing in the market. Right, right when the market like kind of crashed for the most part and started going up again. If you were an investor during that time, I think you you would remember. Everyone thought it was just going to go down even longer, but it didn't. And it rebounded really quickly. And the date was July 20th, 2020. I actually got an email from M1 Finance. It was they're telling me that it was July 18th somehow, but I really didn't fund my portfolio. I think until the 20th, July 18th, 2020 is supposedly when I started my M1 account. I like to say the 20, July 20, 2020. But anyways, I work as a registered nurse. That is my profession by trade. I don't make a significant amount of money. I mean, I do have a solid career. I do talk a lot about career development and the importance behind that because your career, your primary source of income, which is often our careers, is the money that we then use to invest. I'm not just an investor full time. I invest after my primary source of income, right? I work as a nurse full time. And through this journey, you've seen where, where I started. I started in the county jail. I went to the prison. Now I work from home. I started from working as a nurse on the floor to now being able to work from home as a nurse consultant. Still very stressed and scared to, you know, speak in these rooms filled with, you know, hospital executives. And then me being young in my career, being in that same room, a little intimidating, but that is how you end up making more money. Anyways, more recently, right? Let me backtrack. When I first started this portfolio, right, I'm gonna tell you about the funding. Right when I started getting into the workforce, I was really throwing the block up, up the hill. I was doing $500 every single week. My obligations were a lot less. I did have a partner, we were living together, but you know, I was still driving my beater car from college. And you know, I, I was just young in this journey of life. So my obligations were less. As time happens, life happens. You know, I've had to adjust that up and down, up and down. Now, more recently, it's $100 every single month. So that's my current funding schedule. And that is the bare minimum. And a lot of that, if you've been following this journey recently, it's because I did get a job promotion to be a nurse consultant. But in order to get this job, I had to pivot into it and kind of start from the bottom. So it's an entry level, which actually caused me to get a pay cut. And it's funny, I'm going to show you on the data too, 
this is actually the least amount I funded in my portfolio in a year. But my portfolio has increased so much. A lot of it's because the markets continue to boom, which is scary. Another reason is because I do hold Nvidia, which you'll see has just been booming and blowing up as well. All things you can't see right when you first start. My point to giving you this background, friends, is because I just want you guys to understand the most important part to a dividend portfolio is starting and just continuing to go consistently on the path. Despite, you know, things trying to take you out, things trying to get you to change. As long as you have a blueprint to do this and you do it, right, just do it. This is how it'll, it'll happen over time. It's just a matter of time. But friends, enough with that ramble. You know, some of you guys have been here for a long time and we finally hit this mark. The mark I've been most excited for is the 100K mark. But given that this was 90K, four years of the dividend portfolio and reaching a yearly dividend income of 2,500 finally. I mean, this was really sweet. I mean, I couldn't have planned it better. Today, actually, as I record this, it is July 20th july 2020 so with that said friends let's go so here we are now right just to give you proof of the jesse's cash flow portfolio as you can see it's ninety thousand one hundred and fourteen dollars and seventy nine cents that is where we at that is where we are currently all time and here we are see starting on july 20th or roughly says july 19th and we've just continually funded this portfolio you can say jesse well at the very beginning how did you choose your holdings well it was a lot of research it was a lot of research a lot of looking at people's portfolios and kind of deciding my comfort level you know when it comes to investing through that i decided on my holdings you know you're going to see some of them if you actually want to see all of them want to see all my sector allocations in detail there's a link down below in the description box it's free you just click on it it'll literally just show it up on the website and M1 has this really cool feature that allows that. So click on that link if you're curious. I just know how much that helped me when I first started this journey. It's like, what am I supposed to invest in? I have no idea what's even out there in, in each sector. So it does take a lot of research. But once I had the holdings I wanted, the number I wanted, it was all about putting it into sector allocations with percentages, which I'll show you here. And then that again was a decision. You know, for me, for example, Real estate was my biggest allocation at 13%, then had consumer staples at 12. And this was all something I decided. You know, no one tells you this. My ETF was 10%. If you're curious what that is, it's SPYD. And sure, I could have put my ETF and index fund together, but together they're 20%. My index fund itself is VIG, if you're curious. And as you see, you know, as we go down, you know, after those it's tech at 10 percent of my portfolio you know i'm early on in this thing i do believe in tech utilities is at 10 percent financials at nine industrials at eight percent Healthcare is the only holding in the red but it's at seven percent only down 12 percent which you know is, is 450 dollars in the grand scheme of things though it's really not that much your portfolio can't have everything being the green it's just not possible you know i'm sure if i click on the actual sectors here and look inside them there's going to be some holdings actually in the red which i'll show you on another screen but energy at three percent materials at two percent and of course my consumer discretionary i only have one in here i show it every time i've been showing it every time for the last four years mcdonald's but friends let me show you this real quick so my holdings right let's look at some of my best and worst performers so my best performer is nvidia 783 percent gain Exxon, 137% as my second best gainer. But this is a thing, right? NVIDIA, my average share price is $13.35. But regardless, another thing to note about this holding is I did sell $2,000 worth about, you know, last year during the summer uh, in order for me to go to Greece, which was my partner's, you know, my partner's mother. It was like her dream vacation. And I'm so glad we were able to make it happen. And then this year, you know, despite how difficult it is, but you know, this is the thing, guys. You have to live life and you have to make money. You have to try to do both in balance and it's very difficult. You know, I took a pay cut this year. I'm at the minimum funding for my dividend portfolio. You know, it's difficult to do it, but but just like we took my partner's mother to Greece last year, this year we're taking my family to Cancun, which is their dream trip. And, you know, our parents are getting older. Like, it's like you have to make memories, right? Like, what do you value more, money or memories? For me, it'll always be memories and then money. So just some things to 
throw out there, you know, as we are talking about this money here. And then as we continue to go down here, it's just all green, all green. Let's look at the red, right? Because I told you, look how many holdings I actually do have in the red. But only it's it's only one sector that is in the red, which was healthcare. But clearly, I have like Cisco, I got JM Smucker, AT&T in the red. And surprisingly, AT&T is like flat. So looks like it's coming back. Verizon, I've seen it worse. Uh, but you know, it's not great. Has it been great for a while, but they do pay a pretty good dividend. And you know, U UGI is my biggest loss at 25% in the, in the red. You know, it is what it is, but I'd rather be diversified. And with diversification, you know, comes this reality that not everything's gonna be in the red. And you know, just before we go back to the main picture, my positions, I have 50 holdings, as you can see here. My cost basis is $70,400. My portfolio value, which you did see is $90,114, which means if you do the math, do do do, unrealized gain, 28%, which equates to $19,714. And friends, everyone can have their opinion on this, but as I'm gonna show you here in a minute with my dividend calculator, I'm gonna show you the reason why I'm a dividend investor and why I love this strategy as opposed to being just a growth investor. It's been four years and you know I'll make a video on hitting the four year mark of being a dividend investor and telling you all the things I've learned and liked and disliked, but I'll tell you right now, you know, it's worth it. Um, maybe six years into my career and it's been slow and steady, but sometimes I ask myself, you know, where is my nice car in the driveway? You know, cause I still drive a Toyota Camry. I drive a 2014, however, and before that one, it was a, it was a 2000 until it until it died <laughs> but then i asked myself you know where where is my where's like where is my nice shit right for a lack of a better term and sorry for the language but i'm just like where is my nice shit right i've been working in the workforce for six years where is my nice stuff well i got ninety thousand dollars here i have my pension because i do work for the state government which is like another good amount in there and well that that's where it is and we do take trips but sometimes i ask myself where is my nice stuff but that's life. Life is sometimes about making choices. You know, do I either want that nice car in the driveway? Two nice cars even? I look around my neighborhood. I'm like, how do these people afford these cars? But, you know, do I want some nice cars in the driveway? Or do I want financial security for my retirement and my future? Well, for me, I like to set foundations. One of them is career and money. You know, it's one of the pillars of my life. A career, I'm a nurse. That's solid. Income, money, retirement. I'm working on that piece. And that piece is ongoing. Sometimes you feel better about making purchases when you know you have your ducks lined in a row, right? That's the part that I'm working on. Let me just show you some other things here, friends. So year to date, let me just show you. We started on January 2nd at $75,000. And look at this, crazy, 20%. Right when I thought that the market couldn't go any hotter, which on its own, I made plenty of videos of this. You know, it's kind of scary. It is kind of scary because, you know, I, I always go back to the same saying, if you're not playing the game, you're going to lose. By not playing the game is not investing. If you're not investing at all in the markets, if you're not a participant in the markets, you're just losing money with inflation, everything going on. And, you know, this report more recently said inflation flatlined, but, you know, our pockets still hurt. You know, I, I make nurse income and my pockets still hurt. So I can just imagine for the people that don't make nurse income, how much they're hurting. And I'm only a party of two and two dogs. We're dinkwats. <laughs> so I can't imagine a family of four with two kids to feed the family and take care of the family financially. It's just getting more and more expensive. I just can't imagine, guys. It says 20% return for the portfolio for the year to date. And then for the three month mark, about 14%. I like how they finally added this percentage next to the chart here i love that i used to not be able to know how much my portfolio went up and then for the year 25 percent and of course you know we saw all time and all time earned dividends is six thousand sixty one dollars and fifty one cents that's all time over the course of four years nice have no complaints and let me show you my funding history real quick friends so just to be transparent with you guys as you can see in 2020 the first year I started my dividend portfolio. This was me, I started in July. So a little bit past the halfway point of the year. And I still got to $12,700. And that's because I didn't miss. I was investing $500 every single week. I was new into the workforce and my expenses were low. You know, life wasn't really happening at that time. So boom, 
I was able to invest so quickly and so much. And in 2021, like that is the year I aspire to eventually get back to. Every single week, I hit my, my goal every single week of $500. And take note, this was COVID. So you couldn't really go anywhere. You couldn't spend your money anywhere. It, it just wasn't happening. So I saved a lot of money and maybe where people would go and, and spend it or save it, I saved it and invested it into the market. So if you do the math, $500 every week for the year equates to $26,000. So the year 2021 was a perfect year. 2022, I actually went back to school towards the end of the year. I went to get my master's and I paid it out of pocket. That's when I started to feel it financially. You know, a, a $17,000 degree paying it out of pocket, like that's where my money went. And now I finally leveraged that degree to get a work from home job where I'm currently working from home right now as a nurse. So to me, it was worth it, but it took an investment, right? So it took a hit for my portfolio. So $19,500. And then of course, in 2023, I was still in school and paying out of pocket. So it was a whole, it was a whole year, whole school year that year. And that's how you can see, I took a financial hit. So I was trying to hold on, holding on, and I just had to cut it, you know, more and more. And then you could see I sold $2,000 to go to Greece. That is why that is in the gray. And then this year, friends, $100 every single week consistently has equated to this point in time of $2,950. But as you saw, right, my portfolio still went up 20% year to date. That's a lot. And I've only been funding it very slowly. So my point to this is sometimes you just don't know. It may not make a difference. I thought my portfolio was not going to grow very quickly because I had to go to $100 a week versus $500 a week. But it didn't matter. NVIDIA came in and saved the day, which I couldn't have foreseen. But, you know, I did believe in the company when I bought it. And it just it just did what it did. You know, I think everybody's portfolio has one success story. NVIDIA seems to be mine for the time being. And it doesn't mean it'll be there forever, but it is for the time being. And as far as some activity, friends, you know, like I said, this is all data for this video. Let me show you some dividend payouts, give you some inspiration, some motivation. You know, another reason why it's really cool to watch M1 do its thing. So this is the activity section. You could see my purchases here. Um, so I do fund $100 every week, as you can see here. And then I do get paid dividends. So with my funding and my dividends, my dividends, I do drip them. So they go right back into, you know, my account. And then I use those dividend payments to then buy more right so i'm actively dripping so this does help and i should mention that that that's an important key here i'm not actively taking income out of here i'm investing in i'm in, i'm dripping what's coming in and it's just it's just like a moving machine on its own and that's also something that plays a big part because as you saw earlier i do get paid about two thousand five hundred dollars in dividends all that goes right back into my portfolio and tax wise right tax season just passed i didn't take a really big hit yeah, I was surprised. I thought I'd take a bigger hit, but I really did not take a big hit tax-wise. I've still been fine. So um, I know a worry can be, you know, come tax season. However, so I'm four years into this in uh, individual account and it's been fine. And as you can see here on July 20th, I did get paid a couple dividends. $15 from Medtronic, $17 from Essex, $13 from AMT. And these dividends are getting bigger, guys. $10 from O, $16 from Avalon. Sempra, Sempra $7.90. The reason why I say they're getting bigger is because my very first dividend payout was Apple of eight pennies. It'd take way too long to scroll back in time four years worth of these documents just to show you. But just believe me, my very first dividend payout was from Apple of eight pennies. And here we are now getting 16, 15, 13, you know, dollars payouts, right? From some of these dividend holdings. So let's see our list, right? I told you how much I fund my portfolio. We went over my sector allocations and percentages. My current number of holdings, I, I showed you that, that was 50. Let me show you my dividend yield and my expense ratio. I will say, if you do use M1, right? The very the very first time I had to use it, it was actually very confusing to set up my Pi and use the, the, the interface. However, now after four years, I'll tell you, I'm still confused, but I don't mess with it very much. But the interface is a little bit confusing. So it's the only quirk I have on M1. But apart from that, I've really enjoyed using them over the past four years. But with that said, here you see it. 50 holdings for the portfolio. It used to be 51 if you've been here for a while and you're like, oh, why is it 50? I sold Walgreens. I sold my Walgreens um, maybe about two, almost two months ago. Had to cut that thing out. And you don't even have to ask me why. Y you should know. My dividend yield 
is 3.006%, which is solid. And my expense ratio is 0.01%. So practically nothing for expense ratio. Dividend yield, I like it anywhere between 2.8, 3.3. Anywhere in between that range is my comfort zone. Don't really have to worry about it being too high. Why is that? Because if it's too high, you start to worry more. If it's too low, well, maybe it's not working hard enough for you, right? So it's all a balancing act, but that, that's kind of where I like it. So enough with the data, let's get into the dividend calculator. So M1 does have this really cool calculator. I knew about it last time, like I'd gotten an email and I just used it like on my phone app, but it wasn't really there. And then, you know, thanks, shout out to the subscriber that says, hey, check it out again. So I did, I went to go check it out. I'm like, dang, you're actually right. Look at this thing. This is a dividend income calculator on M1 Finance. It really takes away the need for a dividend tracker app because it's just, it's really sweet. Look at this thing. So in 2023, I said I got paid $2,118 of dividends. Average monthly payment was $176. And you can see month by month, you know, oftentimes quarterly is where you see a lot of the, the income come in. And as far as 2024, year so far, um, I think projected is $2,380.82. My paid income so far is $1,359. Pending income, estimated income, and then average monthly income is $198 where I actually pointed out that I'm going to hit my mark or I hit my mark is just in these next 12 months. So this is what I'm gonna go with because the next 12 months is not gonna stop. Like, like this is where I'm at. So I finally hit the marker of $2,537.33. So I would say this is how much my dividend portfolio currently pays me in, in income. So average monthly, $211.44. So crazy guys. So isn't that crazy? We hit that mark. And I think I'm going to get rid of my dividend tracker app. I did like the aesthetic of it. However, I can save the money. I don't think I need it. And um, oh, yeah, look at this. I forgot. It tells you upcoming dividends, too. You know, and the payment amount. This thing's freaking sweet. This thing's gold. All in one spot. Like, this is this is a nice feature. Check it out if you haven't yet. Or if you're thinking about, oh, is that one a good, you know, place for me to build a dividend portfolio? I mean, it's even better now. I really enjoyed the fractional shares. And then now they added this calculator and it's top notch. This is so cool. Look at that. You highlight it. You know, in December, I'm projected to make 324. March, you know, October 2024, $189. This will be really nice when it comes to being, you know, retired or later in the future, really depending on this portfolio. Because now you could see, oh, which months and what income you're getting. So it's going to be really sweet to see. And just before we go, friends, you know, I did not write it in here. But I would like to tell you my my short and long term plans for the portfolio. So the short term plans, friends, is just to continue at $100 every single week, continue to fund this portfolio at this pace. I did take a pay cut. I need to do at least two or three years and then I could flip this job and the experience to a higher paying nurse consultant job where I get to, where I still get to work from home, but I'll make significantly more money. So I'm going to be doing this investing method frequency or pace however you know we should word that for the next you know at least two years if not three and apart to these short-term goals you know if you've been around this journey for a while maybe you're aware of it or not i do work as a nurse right like i mentioned but i do have a channel called male nurse mentor i'm going to create this thing into a little bit of a business uh, it's getting some traction people are reaching out i'm trying to find a way to monetize it and this could potentially be a side hustle that ends up growing. I do have another YouTube channel with that, right? Male Nurse Mentor. Check it out if you're curious. If any of you guys are interested in becoming a, a nurse, you're a guy or even a female, it does not not matter. And you don't know where to start, reach out to me. You're trying to pivot in your career. I got you guys. Um, but that's something that I'm also doing on the short term. I've been making videos for like the last year or so. And I have an Instagram page for it. So now I'm trying to actually leverage it into something so just wanted to mention that and as far as the long-term plans for the portfolio i do want to retire still at the age of 50 52 right with the state of california with medical with my pension and we'll see where we are from now until then right my goal is to have you know at least a million if not two million dollar dividend portfolio or more right damn like i don't gotta just stop it there but my goal is to at least have a million dollar dividend portfolio by that time that way it supplements me in my retirement my dividend income coming in my pension my 457b and of course the other part of this long-term plan is to eventually get into real estate 
However, for me, I'm very foundation based. I decided to go back to school to get a better job, right? My better job is now I get to work from home, but to also increase my income. Once I increase my income with my next work from home job, I'll have a bigger shovel to work with and I'm hoping to invest more into the dividend portfolio and then also use that money to get into real estate. That is my plan long term. But that's gonna be it, friends. Thank you so much for watching this video. You know, I can't stress it enough. If you're thinking about investing in dividends, it's a solid, solid strategy. I've been doing it for four years. I'm getting more and more experience by doing it myself and just telling you the storyline of it unfolding over time. Go back to my very first videos. Like this strategy has not changed. I've just bought my holdings and held on. And if there's a reason to sell, I'll sell. If not, I hold. And my plan is to hold forever until again, there's a reason to sell. We started with 51 holdings, you know, now we're at 50. And maybe even before 51, I think we were at 52 or 53. So my point to that is I've lost a couple along the way. I've had to make a couple decisions, but don't make any huge decisions. It's just tinkering, right? Removal process. But friends, I will see you guys on the next one. It's happy, happy moment here. Take care.